Welcome back to the uh, garage, Woodworks by Snyder, and uh, it's go time. It's epoxy time. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to flip this board. This is the top of this uh, board for the table. We're going to flip this, take some tape. We're going to tape the underside of this reservoir all the way down and up the sides. So then when we start to pour the epoxy, obviously it stays in place, doesn't run everywhere. Um, that's the game plan. I'm excited. This is kind of the test piece here. We'll tape it and uh, we'll come back, do a little mix up, get some color and start pouring it in. Basically what I'm doing, I've never used this tape before, but I think it's like a, a sheathing tape, like exterior of a house. I think what they use it for is like the, uh, you know, you see after, before, after they put the, uh, the uh, plywood on the outside of the house, the exterior side of the house, before they put the siding on, they have like the house wrap. Basically a tape that holds a, that fabric, I think, together. So what I did is taped, obviously, the main seam that was running down this piece. And then anywhere I think, like there was a knot here. I don't know if that's connected in any way to the crack. You never know. But, uh... What I'll do is take these ends, take the ends, and then uh, take this seam here. This is where these two pieces butt together. Boot together. And uh, basically, at that point, We'll be ready to mix up some epoxy and go from there. I'm not taping. Remember I talked about in the last video, these are like uh, the oxidation where the steel cut nails were. I'm not going to tape and fill those. I, I like the look of those. I'm not going to tape those. The, the main epoxy fill on this will be this seam running all the way down. We're going to fill that all the way. I think maybe before I do that, I'll clean out some of this, some of the debris as best I can. Fill it. I don't think I'm going to fill the whole thing. I might do it in stages. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, that's the game plan. So first time kind of doing this uh, with the epoxy. So hopefully we won't. Hopefully we won't ruin this uh, piece of board, but uh, I don't think we will. I think it's going to be good. It's going to come out good. I believe it will. I believe. If anybody out there uh, ever worked with tape before, you know it is a pain in the butt to find the end. So we're going to take these ends like this. So we make like a little, a dam, a dam if you will. To keep the epoxy from running out the end. So we'll do like that. And we create a nice little edge so that epoxy can fill all the way up. And it doesn't, have, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect on these ends. And the reason is, is because 
these ends are going to be cut somewhat for the breadboards, right, to fit on. I almost stabbed myself right in the face with that sucker. Uh, these breadboards are going to be cut at the end, or breadboards won't, but the ends of the table will be cut. That whole tenon situation, kind of like we did the door in the pantry door, it'll be a similar setup. So you'll have these tenons on the end of the table, and that will fit inside the mortises on the breadboards. And that should be a cool uh, part of this project too, because they're pretty big breadboards and cutting into those. And then we're going to do some uh, pegs that are drilled. The holes are drilled in such a way that as you hammer the peg in, it pulls the board, the breadboard in. I believe that those are called breadboards with draw board pegs. So as you, uh, hammer the peg in, it draws the board and cinches it up tight to the table. So I'll be a cool little thing, part of this, but uh, let's finish taping up. Hope everybody had a good week at work. Uh, I did. It was a very busy week at work. And for those who are just tuning in, this is not my real job, although I wish it was. I wish I could make the money I make in my real job doing this. And I probably could, but scared shitless to jump two feet in. You know, jump in the deep end and do it full bore. Uh, so until then, until I uh, grow a set, uh, I'll be doing it like I'm doing it now on the weekend. And evenings, whenever I can fit it in type of thing. What's nice is I can work from the comfort of the garage here and still be close to the family, and so it's good. It's good. It's good. All right. I think it's all taped up. I think what I'm going to do, I've got two 2 by 4s under here. Because these 2 by 4s are pretty straight. Pretty straight. Scared straight. I think what I'm going to do is clamp this board to the 2x4s in select locations. One, two, three, okay. Right? Two in the ends. Maybe we'll do like this. You can never have enough clamps as a woodworker. And I guess I'm just doing this because I didn't, I don't want the, uh, this board has got just a slight little twist, twist and shout to it. And I'm just, in my mind, I'm thinking that maybe it'd be good to cinch this to these straight two by fours underneath. Am I talking too much in this video? Fired up, I got a glass of wine over here. We're about to pour some epoxy. It's gonna be sweet. All right, let me go get the uh, supplies, the epoxy mix up. I probably gotta wear some gloves. You know, I have stuff on that I don't want to get messy, so maybe I'll slap on the old uh, Carhartt overalls, and uh, we'll get crack a lacking. Let's do it. Mix up time. So basically, I went through, cleaned up the inside here as best I could. Any f loose stuff, and got that loose uh, uh, with a knife and then came back with the uh, vacuum cleaned it out so it's ready to go so basically we've got i've just got some uh you know the little measured up cups i'll just do i'm gonna do small batches like little eight ounce mix maybe even less maybe i'll do six ounces it give me room to mix and get the this pigment in there. So basically it's eye candy, Samurai Black. The unveiling, ooh. So you can see, it's got like a metallic type. That's cool. Metallic shimmer to it. Uh, so we're gonna mix this up. It's just one to one's tabletop. So you got a hardener and a resin. It's just one part of each. Stir, 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 right? A couple minutes. 
and then we'll add, and I'm just gonna start small, you know, like an eighth of a teaspoon, put that in the six ounces, see how it looks, if I like it or if I want it to add more, whatever, we'll go with that first look and then pour it in, start going. Basically get these two things incorporated first. Oh, we got good video of this. Maybe we'll do this. I like that. Basically trying to pull from the bottom up. So we get the resin, a hardener, all mixed together, scrape the sides. You really don't need to worry about, well, you do in a way. I mean, don't worry about, freak out that you're putting bubbles into the mix right now. I mean, the bubbles are going to get there no matter how you mix it. I think in the directions to this, it tells you, look, mix one to two minutes. Let it sit. Try to get the bubbles out. But you can do that, I suppose. But then you'll see once we pour it. Those bubbles will start raising, popping up, but uh, that's where the fun part comes because you take either a heat gun or blowtorch and run it just, you know, graze over the top about six to in eight inches away. And uh, those bubbles will all pop. So it's hard to tell because I obviously am putting bubbles into it with my mixing, but when you mix these, begin to mix these two together, it's a little bit cloudy, but then as you continue to mix, it starts getting clear, you know, and that's kind of letting you know that, hey, you've been mixing it and it's fully mixed and integrated. Which I'm feeling comfortable on where it's at right now. It's like a mixing video. Just a video of me mixing. It's kind of boring, right? Get like a forearm workout over here though. All right. Now, the fun part. Let's get an eight teaspoon. And I don't know if you see that. That's it. That's what we're going with. And let's see what happens. Oh, that's pretty sweet. I don't know if you can see that. That's pretty dang sweet right there. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome looking. Make sure I get no crap on my hands when I'm touching the camera. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. So I think I, that's really neat. That's gonna look good. Well, I'm digging this. I mean, the eye candy stuff I was reading, I mean, a little goes a lot, a long way, but I mean, that's just a little eighth of a teaspoon. It, it's got that whole thing. I think that's gonna look really sweet, actually. I mean, I wouldn't say it's black, like a silvery gray. I mean, that's a samurai black, I guess, for you. I'm almost tempted to put one more in, but 
I'm gonna I'm gonna do one more. Do one more. One more. So that's a quarter teaspoon for six ounces. And we'll see. Let me mix this up. See if it gets any blacker. Blacker catter. It doesn't really look any blacker with that, with just with double. Hold this over. It is sweet looking though. The camera that there you go. That's a little bit better. My my shadow jacking it up. So, note to self, I don't think we need to really do a quarter of a teaspoon. An eighth of a teaspoon looks just fine. I'm nervous to start dumping in the wood. Let's go with the big section over here first. All right. Here goes nothing. The dump here. Obviously, I'm going to have to make up a bunch of probably batches of this to fill this whole board. But I'd rather make small batches than, you know, make way too much and not be able to fit the whole thing in. I have waste. I mean, maybe I'm not gonna have to make as much as what I was thinking. I don't know, we'll see. This is a really cool look though, I think. It's gonna be sweet. Like baking a cake of here. Try to get some of this excess, make my cleanup a little bit easier if I can get all of this. As, as much as I can in the cracks makes the sand up I'm assuming would make the sand up uh, a lot easier this is pretty sweet though look look at this I don't know if we can get in there to see that oh, that cat that the lighting sucks you can see that shimmer though in there. Get closer. Oh, there. Uh, I have too many shadows in here. Obviously, I'm not a uh, professional photographer or lighting setup, but basically filled that. I don't know, that might be halfway through that crack. And I made it about down here. I'm gonna mix up another batch and see where that gets us. Obviously, you're gonna go through a lot of these cups. I should have got the uh, keeping it 100 count. By the way, uh, thank you to Blake for the t-shirt, right? Uh, don't hate me, because I'm beautiful.
What would happen if I got this in my beard? The next video you'd see with uh, me with only half a beard because I had to cut a chunk of epoxy out of it. I have like a epoxy concentration phase. Realize I think all work week in the back of my mind, I've been waiting to do this. Well, it's pretty sad, I think, but it's the little things that get us by. Don't get me wrong, I love my job and what I do, but uh, I love uh, woodworking and this type of stuff. Yeah, it's a little bit more. All right, this is almost as close to being totally mixed. I get like a solid forearm workout here doing this. Almost ready for the old mix, for the pigment, for the eye candy. Very animated today, aren't I, in this video? Wow. Like a chemist. A chemistry class. I don't know if anybody out there watching ever went to high school with me, but uh, I remember my chemistry class. I think ninth or 10th grade? Uh, poor girl had her hair caught on fire by the old Bunsen burner. Show of hands how many has done that out there, all right? Not me, I didn't, but uh, that girl did. Her head was smoking like uh, some incense. I mean, that sucker just whoop, went up. Or, I mean, she didn't get hurt, but, uh, you know, people jumped <laughs> on her, put out her head. Uh, you gotta watch out. Remember those old school Bunsen burners, man? Just an open flame on a table. Not, uh... <laughs> Like it's the safest thing ever. I don't know how we got away with those. I talked to my son and his, well, he's still in middle school. I don't think he's got like full blown chemistry class yet. Be interested how they work that now. All right. I think we're ready for a pour here. Let's do it. <clears throat> Let me move this. Make sure not to get any of this. Oh man, that would suck if I got on the camera, huh? Starting to see some bubbles over here, so we'll hit the torch to this soon. Get some pour action here. The camera definitely does not catch. I mean, this has got this is looks so cool when you're pouring it in. The way the pigment kind of folds over itself and creates like little almost like mini designs in the in the color in the pigment like a flowing like it's got movement to it well people just think I'm talking out of my butt here it's hard keeping in these cracks though What we'll do is we'll pour this. Could probably do a couple pours. Do these two cups. Let it sit up and then see how far it actually goes. And then uh, pour another on top of it. Hopefully that's coming through on the camera. Because that is sweet. I think I'm officially hooked in doing this. 
have to do some more of these uh, <laughs> projects in the future because I am liking it. Well, missed. Get some in this little knot here, too. This little river runs through it right here. Oh, I'll never leave Montana, brother. That's right. Quote from that movie. Oh, man. All right. I think that might be good. Now, I'm going to scrape some of this into here. Oh, that's sweet. Sweet Joseph. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to go inside and edit this video and post this. I can feel it. I can feel it, YouTubers. This is going to get me one million hits. One million! Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So let's clean up some of this. Look at that, right in the crack. Try to clean up as much as we can. This way the sanding effort afterwards is not unbearable. See if we can get some decent video of popping some bubbles with the old torch. Oh. Yeah, that's cool. I can see it just fine. I don't know if you guys, if this is coming across in the camera. See little bubbles. You know, I'm trying not to scorch the crap out of it, but get the top layer of bubbles. I'm sure, a heat gun would be a hell of a lot easier with this, but I don't have the coin for heat. I don't even know how how expensive are heat guns. I have to look that up, but. A Milky Way commercial. I know I'm definitely gonna get epoxy on this camera. I think my wife and my son are having a debate. Uh, 
slash argument about uh, colors of lightsabers <laughs> in the house. The last five minutes I've been listening to them go back and forth on uh, lightsaber colors. I don't know. Good versus bad. Luke versus Darth. You know, this is, this is what takes place in my household on a Friday night. You know, no crazy raves and parties, but uh, instead debates on uh, lightsaber colors. You know, as I pour epoxy into a table. I'm doing one, and I'm making a mess of things, I think. Pouring one last batch on this whole sucker. Trying to fill this void. They're still going at it. I think Logan's pushing his luck with the uh, disrespect of mommy. I think this is gonna fill it too. And I mixed up this last batch, I mixed up eight ounces and I said to myself as I was mixing it, it's too much. And I think it's probably going to be too much. Just by a little bit, though. Try not to waste this stuff, you know. The epoxy is definitely not cheap. Nor is the pigment. But. Oh, this is cool. Look at that. It's definitely got a more silver look to it, but, oh, this one's nice and full over here. Make sure all these little nooks and crannies get some. Hey, I'm feeling it's looking pretty good. It's not, it's like a bottomless pit though. Must go deep into the wood. Basically just going through, making sure that the main part of this, as my daughter would say right now, these little pores like this, this little trickle, satification. Satisfying to watch. I'm, I'm convinced that's why so many people get these views on YouTube. They post stuff that's so satisfying to watch. Like maybe this will be. I think that is full. I almost hesitate to wipe any. It's so full, it's just gonna flow everywhere. So I think I'm gonna leave it. Like that, I can scrape it. Use a plane or something to scrape the top edge down before I start sanding. I'm liking how this turned out though. Look at that. I mean, you consider this, this definitely looks a lot thinner, right, than the center. It's a thinner layer, so you're seeing that wood through it, whereas that center vein is dark. You can see that. But that's cool because it's got... It's so I'm so pissed because it's hard to see in the camera. Because of that shimmer, like metallic look, it's got a like, like a movement to it. It's very cool. I just hope when I look at this on the computer, it actually conveys. That's neat. Definitely like this, so. 
I'm gonna run the torch over it and pop some of these bubbles. Hopefully that's coming through because that's cool looking. Oh, the bubble part always, I always love the bubble popping part. Hopefully that comes through. Nice and clear. Get the bubbles out. The bubbles are key. You know, the little tiny bubbles, right? And it gives, makes it look cloudy. And then once you pop it, then you get a nice, clear, look at that. Oh, that's cool. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap up. I'm gonna just do this video right here. Do some editing, put everything together, maybe some cool slow-mo pics. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and post it. And uh, and then next one will be the, the kind of the biscuit joint and glue up of the tabletop. And then there'll be some more epoxy after that because we got to do the rest of the little voids and the rest of the pieces, the table. I just wanted to make sure that this piece was nice and secure, so. Thanks for joining. Make sure to like the video. Please subscribe. I'm at 23. It'd be cool to get 25 subscribers and then 30 and then 50. That'd be cool. Uh, so let's keep pushing. Share the video. Tell your friends about me. I'm, uh, I was going to say I'm different, but that sounds stupid. Anyways, edit that part out. All right. Thanks for joining. And, uh, We'll see you next time.